Alright, big welcome to our channel. We are Team Crushing the Meta, and today we're here with <laughs> Team Captain A. <laughs> Team Captain A. Uh, yeah, I mean, you might have known me as Blazing Paladin, but yeah, the Blazing Paladins are kind of dead right now, so I'm playing a different deck. So let's call you. Uh, what could you call you? Yeah, no, no. Just keep it for uh, keep it to Chris for now. Let's call you Chris. Yeah. So Chris, you are the champion, the team leader champion. Yeah, the final was exciting. It, that, that will be on the Bushy Road uh, yep. YouTube channel. It will. Yeah, it was kind of yeah quick. <laughs> 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 I believe ten or eight minutes. Even the judges were surprised. <laughs> oh, it's over now. Yeah. Oh, that was nice. It was yeah. quick. You won. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, some some people took the sweet ass time to win. And okay, so what are we talking about? We are talking about the, as you can see here. The regional championship team championship in Berlin. Yeah. So the champions, uh, which you played Numutama, of course. We yeah. have four. Of course, well, of course. Uh, I was, I was, uh, I was um, yeah, choosing between Altmile or Victor, but I traded away Victor for Numutama, and that seemed to be the right choice at the end. All right. So you played Numutama. Yes. Tell us a little bit about the deck. Um, well, I, I always enjoy the dirty playstyle, and <laughs> <laughs> this deck is the dirtiest of them all, I believe. Because, yeah, the, 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 the story of stop hitting yourself is actually kind of funny, and um, there are some really nice uh, choices and decisions you can make with the deck that makes it really fun to play, actually. Mm -hmm. And I didn't expect it at first. I also played Nubas last year in Cologne. It's the regionals, and that worked for some reason. So why not try it again? So we played um, five matches. Yes. And then we got to the top four because uh, there were like uh, nineteen teams. I think. Nineteen teams, seventy-three yeah. players. Yeah, th th that was very exciting because uh, we had less teams, but they were all yeah. good teams. They were really amazing. Yeah, I, I haven't so. played a tournament in a while that was that high of level players because we have uh, the best teams from Denmark, the best team from uh, Czechia, uh, we Austria. had a lot yeah, of Austria. Austria. Uh, we had a lot of different uh, countries that was... Uh, that our, were, uh, Dutchie, our, our other Dutchies. Yeah, our well. Dutchies, which also had the silver medallion uh, last time, came to the finals, played the they finals. They were fifth place, so they, they just missed top yeah. four. Yeah. That would have been really fun. Yeah. So the uh, finals. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> just the just get home. So yeah. So yeah, it, it, it was a crazy. Uh, it was a crazy tournament. Uh, we had a lot of fun. Yeah, and, we met uh, our opponents. Yeah, they yeah. were so happy for us. I haven't seen uh, like when we finished our last game. They were like, uh, "Good luck, guys. You played really well. You deserve it." And uh, even uh, yeah, with the was, pictures that we will upload. It was a respected, tur respected tournament and yeah. respected players. Yeah. And yeah, the first match against Giese, <laughs> I could have won, but I made a terrible misplay. I should have never used the Zanki to discard for Stride because I was not thinking right and I never faced Giese before. Uh, my second game was against the Mirror match and he was quite unlucky with, um, with G assisting. But yeah, the Rina is just so powerful that even when you have an, an huge disadvantage, Rina will make up for it in almost one turn. So that was really close actually. Um, then I faced Coral and that was really bad luck actually because uh, I had four uh, Zankis in hand. The guy really loved me at, at some point. And I, I really missed the guard value. Otherwise I could have won on the, say, on the mm -hmm. first try. And that was kind of sad. Um, my fourth match was against Nubatawa again. And he, also he was kind of unlucky at G assisting, but that was the harder match of the two players because he was able to stride around the same time that I was able to uh, get my place off and that was kind of annoying because yeah Rinna was the MVP that uh, that game because we both were emptying each other's hand and that uh, really came out in the end uh, my last matchup was against Dark Regulars, which I've practiced a lot actually, <laughs> because I was um, doubting the choice of Nubitama, uh, and I was practicing Dark Regulars at first. But then I found out that Nuba was the way to go, so yeah, I had some um, experience yeah. with Darks as well. Also playing against Darks, I mean, uh, we still think that Darks versus Nubitama is a hard matchup because Dark Regular could just fill up their hand 
but if you uh, maybe just try to empty up their hand in the early game and then go into the mid game and just go rather than and remove the starter from the field. Yeah, of course. That's the best solution. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was really working. Um, my semi-final was against Hari, um, which was a real brainstormer. I needed to remove the betties and luckily my heal triggers came to me so my G guard could have fixed the problems. And that was that, that can really can that can really clutch in the end. And my finals was against Hanji. I never played against that deck. <laughs> it was it was scary. Um, yeah. I still need to rewatch re the match when yeah. it when it when it uh, comes online because I really I'm really excited about what, what went wrong and what went right because I was actually expecting an, a strike turn but it was finished on the first strike for me. Yeah. And that's only the, the only time that I ever finished a game on first strike with Rinne. Yeah, so so as, as I said we played uh, five matches in the, let's say in the tournament itself. Uh, we won the first, lost the... Oh, Chris lost the second. Uh, no, I won, no I lost you, you lost the first. Uh, uh, won the second, lost the third. But as a team, we won the first two. We lost the third match. Yeah. Um, and we. Won yeah, I, I didn't lose. <laughs> I went undefeated. <laughs> and yeah, so. Yeah. So uh, then we got into top four. <laughs> Barely in the top four. That was because of a golden match, as we like to call it. Uh, our last match in the Swiss tournament, we was played. It? Yeah, we, we got up here like crazy. We yeah. played against the first team. That, so, that went 4 0. Yep. And and we went uh, like 3 1. So uh, it was just crazy. We played against team from uh, from the Czech Republic. Um, that that Those team guys was. Were amazing. Yeah, they were, they were all really good. Uh, they had no fear, they were rushing, they were playing their game and they played really good. Uh, but we were able to steal the win. Uh, and that's I think the reason. If you, if you did, yeah, I think if you were matched up against any other team, we wouldn't have the uh, no. top 4 spot. No, we, we wouldn't have the. Uh, because we, enough, there, was, there was a down pair points. in round 3. Um, and we lost we that. Lost, unfortunately. Yep. And I think that the. the, the uh, the up pair in the last round really saved the, um, the top four spot. But I think it was fair because we got down paired and then we got up paired like hell. Yeah. <laughs> so um, let's yeah. let's go through the deck and then uh, maybe ask you about the experience uh, and how did you came to team crushing the meta? Huh. Because you're actually, as yeah. you can see here, guys, crushing the meta, the, the origin. origins. Because uh, Chris here is actually the one who created Crushing the Matter with me, D Boy. Yes. And Seng, our third player, is the one who got me into the game. So this, I, I wouldn't have uh, it won was the this best tournament. Set. Yeah. It was the best end of uh, send off to G. Yep. We we played with the original the original team. Yeah. So as you can see, right, top four, and then top. Uh, well, actually, top this one was for free. Four. This one was deserved, <laughs> and this one was for Lux. Yep. And of course the champions yeah. would even die. Okay, let's go through the deck. <laughs> yeah, um, for my starter, Burai. Um, most of the time it was just soul in and draw, and um, I was lucky sometimes that my opponent wasn't able to retire it uh, with Sherrod ability. Uh, and sometimes it really came in clutch because I was able to steal a trigger from the drop zone and attack the starter because most of the time the starting Vanguard is such an important combo piece for the deck. So that really helped in the end. Um, against the Nuvatape player I was able to steal his Madoi uh, away from his field so he wasn't able to draw and get power and that was really, really in, came really handy. Um, so yeah, for my Great Trace, uh, four Zankis. Yeah, you won't, you're not running any less than four actually. His uh, skill on right, on stride is amazing. The fact that, it's, that it is not once per turn um, is actually kind of broken, I think. <laughs> because it's two attacks on the first, and even uh, when you read right into him, it's another two attacks. And this, the, the second time you, ride, you have a GB2, the first dominated attack will be an 10k and extra crit. So that you have to guard three attacks with 10k and critical. So in times that, that I was able to rewrite into him, I, I, I took the chance because the extra attack was forcing way too much out of my opponent's hand. Um, up next, Orbelon. This one was the MVP. When I was great stuck at three, this one came to me. The other ones, <laughs> yeah. Um, I decided to play 
3 of him because I didn't want to risk the chance of not having a Shirinui in my hand because I kind of have a lot of experience with that. Um, that missing my, my ideal right target. So playing him really helped. Uh, for my grade twos, I decided to play two Tamahagene Metsus. Um, for his ability, um, yeah, I find I found that the, the bind ability was not always necessary. So I I only well, I only played him when I found the time was necessary to get the bind card back to my hand. Uh, so he was never a right option or an. an target for the early game and I wanted to play the early game as safe as possible because last year I played him as well as for, at 4 and I missed really important uh, combo pieces because of his bind ability so yeah I kind of learned from that mistake um, up next um, stealth rope Ungai stealth dragon um, this guy saved me in the finals I had, didn't have any grade twos in hand and um, I checked the top card for the um, for the grade 2 uh, at my draw phase and he came to me, so that was uh, quite nice. Um, his draw ability, I used it a couple of times, but was not really necessary. But his um, on place ability was, came really handy. Not as, I didn't play it as much as I liked it to be, but um, the times that I activated it, it gave me such a huge advantage because I, I gave myself 20k columns and my opponent couldn't uh, rise in power mm -hmm. for that moment. This card will become even more uh, powerful when we go into uh, premium. premium. Yeah. Because playing, especially <laughs> playing as force or just a vanguard that have 12k, um, most of your units could hit actually that 12k because mm. of uh, this stand skill. Because the stand could yeah. give an extra 3k. The stand will not, won't. The 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 12 ks won't be a problem, but no, the 13 k will, will be in. Uh, yeah. Will be a pain in the ass. Yeah. Also, uh, <laughs> especially. Yeah, the units that you call. Uh, most of them, like if you call a trigger, which is a 5k, use it with the frog, then it hits the 11k. But with the 12k and the 13k, the Vanguard that would not hit. So that's why Unga will become better. I think he will definitely be a 3 off or of even a 4 off in the most decks when we're going to be. Yeah, in. spoiler warning, the stand will be played. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. Um, I play 3 of Embice. Um, that guy really <laughs> saved me. His, his power and. The, the fact that I can charge him up to 3k with the stand or even with my draw trigger um, made it such a huge beater. Um, with most of the turns that I dominated the uh, units, he was a 22 attacker. Yeah. That's it, it was just crazy because you use the stand on him, give him the extra uh, 3k, which is perfect for him to hit the 12k, and then you put the stand back to your deck so you have more. Uh, opportunities to get the stand back, re-stand him and attack again for at least at, uh, what is it, 26, 27? Yeah. And the other part I found really handy, it, it, it is a card that doesn't have any on-place value, yeah. so if I need to rush in the early game, I just call it and yeah. attack. Um, the last card I would play... You, would, you have been play, would you want to play four of him, let's say if you have mm. the chance to change the deck? Like nah. take him out, play four of these and four of these? No, I think that everything that I've played right now filled this part for the, the, the winning image that I have. And yeah, Matsu was was a 20k with the stand trigger. He was 20k with the stand trigger. I really wanted to hit yeah. the number, the, the, the right numbers. Um, the last one is... Um, I'm not going even to pronounce that. It's <laughs> not even upside down. But... Um, so that's to go. Yeah. Let's call him that. Yeah, Satsu. Satsu. Um, <laughs> 11 k beat stick came really in handy. In the mirror matches it was quite amazing because, yeah, I have a sure new Vanguard. Yeah, go hit yourself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's 14 attack. No, 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 no. 16, 16. <laughs> or 21 even. In some cases, or 26. Yep. It was, uh, that was really funny in, uh, in the mirror matches. Um, I didn't use his second skill as often as I liked. Um, Total Blast, he didn't really attack into you that much. No, I, I didn't have him in hand that often. <laughs> I played four of him and most of the time it was a necessary right target or it went into my damage zone. Yeah, when you call him in the early game, they would definitely try to rid get rid of him. Yeah, it's an easy uh, easy target to remove uh, to get my finger less pressure. Huh? Um, sometimes I played him for the same reason, just to get him on the field and um, yeah, just to get him off on the field so my opponent 
is distracted from the vanguard and that really came uh, in handy when I was at the low hand or had a crappy defense. So that was my grade 2 lineup. Um, for my grade 1s, I play, uh, play triple Mistoad, Mistfrog. This guy was my hero. It actually <laughs> saved me so much. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you should see the face of Sinsuke right now. Yeah. It was his, uh, his burden of uh, despair. <laughs> but yeah. Um, his ability to It's gain... always a frog. Yeah. <laughs> his ability to give uh, a dominated unit or a unit 6k and the, the extra draw really saves saves the, 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 my games. There were times that my opponent had an 11k dominated unit and I need to, to the extra 10k shield so I popped him into soul, uh, blessed the drawing and my opponent was forced to guard even more because of the, the turn that I was in. And even when when my opponent was forced to play a stand trigger, he was like, ah, I'm safe. No, 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 you're not. Because my, <laughs> my frog will take care of that. Yeah. And that re I, I believe that really saved me in the finals, especially, because my frog, he uh, was able to boost his uh, rook, uh, the, the Bermuda stand trigger, yep. up to 11 or 12k, and that was more than enough. Or no, 15, but yeah. Um, still hits. Still hits. That was the, that was the, that was the whole thing. He needed to hit. Um, I three, uh, played three of her, didn't use it as much as I liked because it was almost, always, yeah, people snatched it away from me. Yeah. The only game... Understandable. Hmm, yeah. <laughs> because, uh, yeah, why wouldn't you? Um, Good right target if you get her, like 7k if you want to. Could just trade one of her for an extra frog, but you don't really want to play too much of him. No. And you don't really have um, another thing to do. Sometimes she's very good if you don't have your grade twos, so you can just call her, uh, call like a crit behind her, attack with that first, and then attack with your finger. If you get a stand trigger, she restands. She still gets extra 5k, hits the 12, mm. uh, 12, 17, 22, but doesn't do much when you use the stand of her on her because she will hit for, um, um, for blank numbers. Yeah, which is good to hit the rare guards, but, but not, not so much as good as the finger. Yeah. I actually there were a few games where I have where I had her in the back row, um, those were amazing matches. Yeah, she the, gets the, 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 the DI, Yeah, against the DI player, uh, I had her with and by, and that yeah. was an, uh, well, <laughs> that was a bit too much. Yeah, she she, she gets the extra 15k because you ha you still have your stride skill. If yeah. you rewrite this stride, she gets 20k, which is amazing. Yeah. Um, for stride folders, because I need my right. Yeah. Seven, 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 seven grade threes. Yes. So you need four. I need four, yes. And for the unflip PGs, um, Noroi is also a fine option, but it's it, the the farther you are in the late game, the less chance that you will get it. And sometimes the counter charging is really important. Actually, I only used the counter charge ability like once or twice, mm -hmm. but my games were never that long, actually. So yeah. Uh, if you go to the late game and your opponent is just uh, keeping hand attacking to your rear guards, then she becomes an enemy. But uh, most of the time, the other PG would not do much because you never go into the late game. You need never. two of it in the drop zone, you need one of your units to hit, uh, one of your units having a crit hitting because you always go into Rena. <laughs> it was <laughs> too sense. much to ask. <laughs> yeah. um, for the trigger lineup, for Norois, um, he, was, he came really handy um, because of the early fact game rush. early game rush. Um, with the crit, he was able to, with the stand trigger, he was able to hit for seven on Pesky, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, great ones in the, in the front row. Uh, so he was my cleanup boy if I needed him. Two of the counter charge uh, crits. I'm, I was thinking about bumping him because I found out that sometimes when my pl uh, opponent was really smart and keeping me damage control and my perfect guard wasn't able to trigger. I would have liked to see him a bit more because of the fact that I could counter charge whenever I want. Yeah, maybe especially against Giza. <laughs> yeah, those kind especially of against yeah. Giza. Um, I play two draw triggers just because there are other ways for me to draw. And sometimes it, it, his effect was uh, really handy. But only on my own units. And for the stand triggers, this guy was really amazing. In the mirror match, uh, 
I found out that there was a uh, really important uh, yeah, gap in the, in, the, in the play interaction and that was that my opponent was um, playing Metsu mm -hmm. and he bound a, a card from his deck. Then he activated Metsu's ability and he retreated the co bound card to his hand. Mm -hmm. My hand was at 6, uh, lower than 6 at the moment. <laughs> I was able to um, get him back from the drop zone in, in a very funny way. Because I was able to choose my um, stand trigger due to his um, drop zone revival ability. Mm -hmm. And with Metsu I was able to just snatch him back to the hand and get myself an extra 10k shield. <laughs> that came really handy. Um, and the fourth, the counter charge heals, the soul charge heals. Actually only used the counter charge effect because the soul charge was never a uh, problem in the deck. Even when you when you rewrite, you get an extra soul, so it's not yeah. a problem. Um, for my G zone, yeah. <laughs> the 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 sadder part actually. <laughs> All of my matches were won thanks to him. <laughs> um, the, the, I wanted to play. I was thinking Sad about story. yeah. I was thinking about playing more variety because I wanted to have more wanted to have options. But I found out that even when I wanted to go into uh, Mugen Lord, he was the better Mugen Lord. So, yeah. yeah. He is, he's the better everything. Because yeah, actually, it he, is. He costs your opponent two cards from hand, and then they have to guard at least with one card for that. So he costs your opponent actually four cards just by himself. At that was least too strong. Four cards, yeah. Um, the other card that I used during the tournament was him in the Giza matchup, because my opponent was smart and was keeping me at low damage. So, yeah. You have to. I had to, and he, he had annoying cards on the field and I needed to remove them as fast as quickly yep. because I didn't want to deal with nerves of broken hearts. Yep. So yeah, th those were my MVPs during the tournament. Um, the boys that were left out were my Midgen Lords. I really wanted to play him, but yeah, um, <laughs> they're just here for the options. Um, one time the GB8 and my Turo Merican. A very good card. Yeah. One of the strongest. <clears throat> I never got to use him. I could have used him in one game, but that would have cost me like four G Guardians, and that was a bit too much because I didn't want to gamble on it. I only used him during practice matches actually because of his ability to reset the hand to four, and with the dominate ability from Rina, of, uh, no, uh, Zanki, mm -hmm. it'll force you another card or another damage. So yeah, that was uh, quite handy actually. Um, one Sea Breeze just because, um, even with the new ruling, sometimes Sea Breeze is a better way to go. Yeah. Um, for the G-Guards... Did you use him? Hmm? Did you use him? No, never. I never had any problems, uh, because the, the, the only matches where I was able to... You, well, I could have used them. I already was able to strike on the normal yeah, way with okay. the new ruling. So because yeah. you went first, yeah. yeah. Uh, that was the only He time. missed the G assist or he, he missed he missed the G he assist. Missed the G assist. And it wasn't yeah, able I, to revive. I think that's still unfair in the new rulings. Like when you miss a G assist and your opponent's already on grade three, you can't do nothing. Oh wait, he was able to rewrite because he didn't want to have the uh, Z breeze, but, yeah, but then he but forgot that, about that, the that other does one. Nothing. Yeah, I heard that. <laughs> he, I, he was thinking, Oh yeah, the new ruling. <laughs> yeah. Um for the G guards, one decimal. Um yep. she saved me times a couple of times. It's a she? She? I don't know. It? I don't know. It? Gender studies. No, please don't. Um, <laughs> she helped me quite sometimes with uh, protecting my ambis or my um, satoris or so. Or so. Or so. Yeah. Nah. It's, it's just Dutch. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's just a good, yeah, good it's card to good have. Card. It works really good in the mirror match because they can't target uh, your units anymore. Uh, but yeah, of course. <laughs> With Rin, it doesn't even matter because it's always coming from the hand. Yeah. Um, then one of her wasn't really needed actually. I never played her. Um, no. The gamble of the shield was never an option actually, no. um, because she the other the other G guard was doing way much more work. I had in the, the in the mirror match there was a thing that my opponent used it against me and I was looking at him and thought of me, yeah, no, no, you, you guard more <laughs> because the attack was actually for 26. He, yeah, there was there were better options actually. Um, this guy did amazing work. In matchups that were crucial in the end, he really saved me because of my opponent's hand size when it's 15k or more. Or, uh, wait, uh, when six or more cards, it's a 15k shield, so yeah. Like against Bumidas, against Onjis, a lot of uh, decks have a big draw power. Even Dark Irregulars, this card is good. I still think that it's a mistake in the design. 
because you should have like the first skill uh, and the second skill. Most of the time when your opponent attack into you, especially in the mid late game, they have less cards because of your uh, Renin, because of your stride skill. And then this card said if they have more cards, and that's just, yeah, it, it's a bit stupid, but it works, I guess. And my last hero, Georgan. It was um, in the semi-finals, this guy was my hero. Um, I faced uh, Hari, and there were two or three baddies in the soul, and I needed to f find a clever way to remove them. And so I waited, took the damage, sniped one betty, and then I found out that uh, Purple Surprise was not the right target, so I snatched the last betty and stopped this complete uh, yep. attacking loop. So yeah, that's the deck profile actually. Yeah, so as you can see or hear from uh, Chris, he said a lot of mirror match, mirror match this, mirror match that. We actually uh, thought about how our team, um, let's say player A, player B and player C would be. Mm -hmm. And um, I had full trust in Chris that he could win the mirror match. Because when it comes to skills, skills only, uh, I think that Chris is the better player in the most situations. Even though we played a tournament, which there the, the, were a the, lot of good players. There were so many... Yeah. Amazing players. No, I, I never had a match where I was able to just relax and win easy. Yeah, we saw that yeah. <laughs> because every time we were looking to, I was looking to the left. I was, I was seeing you full focus into your game, it but was, still, it was, it was calculating the, comp yep. the whole time. It was, yeah, yeah. But I, I, I just had full trust, and I knew that you will win the mirror match. And I told him before the the tournament that I know for sure that you will definitely play against Anji. And you definitely play against uh, Dark, regulars. Dark Regulars and the Mirror Match. And yeah. those three... Um, the Coral and Geese were yeah. kind of surprising, yeah. I, I myself don't really have a problem with Nubutama because I can finish them on the first try if they give me too much damage. But I thought it was more interesting to put actually Chris to the test because... Uh, well, I've been away <laughs> from, for, from for six months right now. Yeah. So I took a break and after six months I decided to play with you in, in Berlin for the Spring Fest. Yeah, Chris said actually that he would not come back into Vanguard except if he plays with uh, Seng or Marte or Sensky, whatever you want to call him, uh, and me in the team and we thought, yeah, why not? Let's check so, that. Yeah. That's why I picked up the deck again and played, tested <laughs> a lot and it paid off in the end. That's so crushing the meta, but our player A still plays meta, as always. <laughs> Alright guys, thanks for watching, see you and uh, see you later. Oh yeah, and uh, if you want to see the other two profiles, keep uh, in mind that you could always find us on Facebook, and you could go to our YouTube channel and try to check the videos that we have right there. We'll also do a video discussion of us just talking about the tournament, uh, because it was a very interesting tournament. So yeah, that was it for now. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.